everyone, and welcome to this episode of Let's Chat Live, a show where we interview new and upcoming podcasts and icons of awesome podcasts where you can learn about their show and why you should listen. I am your host, Bree, and this is Chris Rebel from the Let's Chat podcast. And today we have the opportunity to sit down with Gerard and Thomas from Awfully Irish Podcast, where they do chats, interviews, and more. And we are going to bring them on. Spoiler alert, they have incredible accents. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Where are you guys from for people that don't know? Thomas begins. Not that it's obvious. Scotland. Uh, uh, uh. Ah, British Columbia. Nice All right, so Thomas's mic isn't working there. Oh, he's frozen. Um, oh. So we're from Offaly, which is um, in the center of Ireland. It's uh, a pretty awful place. That's why it's called Offaly. Um, there you go. Oh, um, it's, oh, oh Offaly oh is actually God. a place in really, Irish. This is really yeah, interesting. It, I didn't put together that was what, your podcast. That's the name of your podcast. I, I didn't well, have any realized that. Had, I didn't know that had any connection. That worked yeah, out really well. But. That is funny. Yeah, you know, it's um, it, it's one of the poorer part of our parts of parts of Ireland. It's um, got some cool places, some cool history. Um, some not so cool people, hence the podcast. Um, so, now Ireland is a, is a pretty small place, so everything's pretty small compared to what you guys got. You know, I live in a town, and you wouldn't consider this a town in the states. You'd consider it like a hamlet or something tiny. Um, and then, you know, Thomas is from a village, and Ooh. that's pretty damn small. Wow. Yeah. A village. That is so cool. It's weird. We still call them villages. Yeah. It's, just, it's always we, we have some of that in the states too. There are like like very small towns are considered villages. I mean, they don't look any different, but I guess in the north in the northeast, yeah. a Rhode Island thing. No, Jersey. I see it in Jersey. To believe it or not, yeah. like the village of stuff. But yeah, that's wonderful. Um, so Center Island. This is where I'm going to show how much I know so little about geography. Like, how how long does it take okay. to drive across Ireland? Mm -hmm. Um ooh. oh. It's a good question. But like you could do it in like the same Oh, you probably get yeah. it done in a day if 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 you really wanted to. I mean, it's 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 and pretty girl. damn small. And oh, anger, oh, fine yeah. apologies. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, really? but like uh <laughs> Yeah, no, it, 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 about a day. It's pretty oh, so yeah, so it's like, take what, it North Carolina, North Carolina is pretty big or Virginia, you have to drive through and it takes like almost all day. Oh, someone was asking. I, I'm in Rhode Island, and Bree is in Virginia. Oh, I, yeah, Virginia. Um, it's a giant state. Like it's just, just huge, and there's just it just doesn't end. Mm, but it's yeah. beautiful. Lots of mountains. Yeah, in in our in the states, uh, Rhode Island is the smallest state in the in our in our union. Uh, I am. I think it's forty minutes to get from top to bottom. Oh my 50. gosh! Yeah, I mean, I go grocery shopping in a different state. I feel like you're not kidding. No, I'm not. I go to Ma I go oh to Adder I, yeah. I live uh, like 20 minutes from the Atterborough border, and that's where the good market basket is. But no one's here for our grocery list. So, um, so how long have you two been uh, podcasting for? Awfully long. It feels that way. I'm like, they just left because of that. Like we're done. This is <laughs> this is horrible. I quit. We said no puns. Did you not get our writer? Yeah, we've been doing this um, too long. Um, it's a short of it, but we've been doing it. Realistically, for what six, seven months now? S seven months, nice. yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, right. um, seven months. We started during incredible. the first lockdown. That's, I mean, what a, what a good time to start. Um, how, have you, have you, how many episodes of you are you in? 166 um, with 67 coming out tomorrow. But you guys seven are months? a ways in, you're, you're pretty deep into it. You do most of your shows live on YouTube, or how do you you mostly record on StreamYard, you said, right? Well, we we do all our podcasts with guests. Record that on Zoom, and then for we'll do a lot of live streams with, so we get to know our audience really well. So even like in the chat now, I see like Hala and Easy. We 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 would be able to name our subscribers by name. That's how close we are with them. You know. <laughs> well, do you guys chat it, on Discord? Um, yes. Yeah, we have a Discord. Oh, I'll do. Where? Yeah, that that is uh, that. This warms my heart so much. I. I think we were chatting a little bit before. I started my pod. I started Let's Chat with Chris Rebel 
uh, in 2013, and by by myself and my my at the time my co-host left pretty quickly in, and then was just doing. Sorry, my cats are now fighting. God, what what is the cats? And like, as you guys know, it's a fucking grind. I mean, it's fun, but it's a grind. And like, um, they, they from what they say, the magic number is for an episode for podcast. Once you hit episode 20, that's like the marker. Like a lot of people won't even go on your show really? and make names. Yeah, 20, there's, that's like the magic number. Most people quit within the first 20 episodes. So, and you guys are in the hundreds. So you're, you're one of us. You're uh, you're podcast nerds, I assume. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It, yeah. It's fun. Have you had, um, and it's so good to see that you have such like a strong community already. Uh, I, thought I, was again. I love this so much. You, already, you brought guests along. Oh, Great. So you guys have a, a pretty big variety of guests that you've had. You had comedians, you had a doctor. I listened to the one about the um, the biologist. I mean, where do you yes. find your guests? That's With Rob Nelson. He's a great yeah. dude. Rob's an awesome dude. Oh, I love that episode. That was actually, uh, I think it was like episode 150 something. That was my first solo podcast I've ever done. Oh, it's terrifying. God. Oh my God. Congratulations. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> Who does what? I guess though, just text them. Like, you, you know, you ask, you DM on Instagram and they come on your show. Yeah, it's as yeah. easy as that. Like, You'll get a lot of no's or blanks or just not responses, but the ones you do yeah. get, you know. The only thing better than a uh, no is the only thing better than a yes is a fast no because most people just. I'm very guilty of not responding to many of things as well. So, so Brie, thank you. I'll tell, I'll tell you our most famous no. We we um, I, I was texting this person and uh, big famous celebrity and I didn't really know who he was. I was a bit stupid back, you know, six months ago, how I usually am. <laughs> six months. But I, I texted. Texted Patton Oswalt, and he said no. How did, wait, hold back up, back up. Let's just pause here. How did you get his number? Because I love Patton Oswalt. That's like a dream guest. No, I DM'd him on Instagram. I said, do you oh, want to okay. come on our podcast? Right, and he goes, uh, he goes, I'd lo- he goes, he politely declined. And then I found out that he was Remy and Ratatouille, and that kind of tore my heartstrings a little bit more. Oh. And what, what was and crazy Oswald was, was super when Tom, he is... Uh, he was literally on the Joe Rogan experience, I think, like within two days of Thomas asking him to get on ours. Even uh, you get, if you get a no from someone that level, even that's a fucking win. That's huge. Absolutely. That's oh, yeah. huge. I love Pat Oswald. You, you didn't know he was the rat in Ratatouille? Not, not at first when I asked him, yeah. but uh, after. Read, after. That's cool. I love that. Yeah, Ratatouille's great. And Oh, my God. Did you ever see uh, – were you Parks and Rex fan? Uh, no, I wasn't. I thought that. you were taking off your sweater to show us a Ratatouille shirt, and I'm a little oh, disappointed. But it's a cat <laughs> or a dog in your shirt. <laughs> oh, you can't hear me. Oh, can't hear us. Nothing inappropriate with Simon's Gerard. Nothing. Okay, I believe you. I'm trusting you now. Like, if I go back and watch, there'll be lawsuits on your way. No. Oh, I didn't even know he was the rat. That's so funny. That's, that's funny because I'm a huge comedy fan as well. So, but like, I knew him for more like stand up and stuff. But I, I love Reddit too. That's, yeah, he's, he is so great in that movie. That's cute. He, he's like one of those actors who's like in, who's just like in everything. So, how do you, um, yeah. how do you two know each other pre podcast and decided that, like, hey, 2020 is terrible and we're stuck inside and we should spend time together virtually? <laughs> is that how it happened? Yeah. Thomas, were you saying or were I? Do you know each other in real life? Oh yeah, we live fifteen minutes away from each other. Like Aww. we went to the same. Uh, I guess I guess it's your high school. We went to the, that same thing together. We we sat beside each other in Irish, you know, Irish class. That was pretty fun. But uh, we've known each other beforehand for like six years, and it wasn't just the two of us at the start. We had our other good friend Dara. He was also a co-host, and he left because. He was going off to study marine biology, which is a big course and requires oh, lots wow. of time and no time for silly little podcasts. But, you know, we love them all the same. Um, <laughs> and, you, know, you made the wrong choice. You know? Yeah. I've been going for years, uh, myself and Thomas, but only within the last year have we really, or year and a half maybe, have we really gotten, you know, to be good friends? Um, like, we, okay, so... In our first three years of school, we barely ever talked. Went to this thing called transition year, where you get ready for like your final exams, mm. but it's like it's like a break. It's more of like focus on yourself rather than your schoolwork. It's, it's a great thing in the Irish education system. And during that, myself and Thomas were in the same class. We got on a lot more, started talking. Um, 
in fifth year we started sitting together in Irish um because you've learned Irish in Ireland surprisingly and uh we had one hell of a teacher um so you know we always hung together um you know clinging on for dear life and in the end <laughs> we started the podcast um so yeah what's Irish class like in Japan we had Japanese class where we learned like Japanese and like customs and stuff is Irish class a bit like that no well it's, yeah it's, we, yeah we, we learned dances and stuff but that was like once yeah. <laughs> once now you learn the Irish language and you you learn how to read poetry and prose oh, which oh, are like, yeah. we had oh that story. we call it English yeah. class and you read a bunch of classics that are really terrible yeah, yeah, I've got a lot of criticism about how they teach English. A lot yeah. of criticism. Not good, eh? Nope, didn't do that very well. Yeah. So should we just turn this into a Dragonheart uh, uh, tribute to the, the, the least rated, the most underrated Sean Connery movie? Which Sean Connery is that? He's the dragon in Dragonheart. Oh, yeah, that's right. A movie so, that probably nobody remembers. I don't. Exactly. I do remember. For some I saw that in Fighting Forrester and... Oh, so so, yeah. Um, so, so Bree and I have actually never met in real life. Really? Why not? We live right? really far away from each other. It's like eight hours away. That's not. Too, is that too far, Revel? You yeah, go shopping well, forty minutes away. Just yeah. Well, we don't, neither of us have the well now because of lockdown and like kids and no money to travel to do fun things and free time. Tisk <laughs> tisk. Yeah, we met on Twitter. We never, I don't know, you know, 2015, 2016? I don't know. But we had met on Twitter. We were fr we made friends on Twitter. Uh, we were Twitter friends and then became, like, just friend friends. And then when I kind of last year decided I wanted to actually take the podcast to, like, the next level and actually do more with what I was doing. I, just, I, was, I had done the podcast for a while, and it was great. But, like, I'm sure as you uh, – as you may know, it's like with anything, if you do it, you, just, you know, you get to a level, like you just had to, it was just me. It wasn't fresh anymore. And I was like trying to figure out my next steps. And then uh, I was like, I'm, I need a producer. And Brie was my first call. And, and I said, please come visit me one day. Yeah, she's right. Eight hours. And Brie said, no, I will not visit you, but we can still be friends online. <laughs> I will not visit you, but I will be your friend online. I, I did made our road trip in the States. Uh, you can hang out with us. Country. So you've been to the States? What part you go to? Uh, yes, um, well, I've been to I went to Florida with my family many, many a time, mm -hmm. and South Dakota most recently. Oh, I want to go to South Dakota. I've lived here my whole life, and I've never been to South Dakota. What was it like? Empty as fuck. Badlands. Language. <laughs> Fudge. <laughs> no, it, it was very wild place. It, it was very very unique. Um, I love the people. I love. I, lo I love Americans in, in general. He's a, he's a lovely bunch. We uh, like you Irish. Uh, We're pro-Irish. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, no, it was just a unique experience there. People were lovely. Food was magnificent. Be it, it wasn't the best for you, but it was nice. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Depends yeah. on where you go. Definitely not. We had gone today just talking about that, actually. Uh, you know, American food and how it's grown. But, yeah, no, it, it was an amazing place. I, w I went there to do archery. Um I am Irish national champion in um, bow hunting. And you know it's, what? Wait, what? It's what? In the lead. Yeah. Uh, I have a podcast and I do bow hunting. What? And I'm also world champion because yeah. I went to the States. So, like, so if Thomas yes. is acting, so when Thomas is acting up, you can just like. Phew. Yeah, Thomas stuck yeah. basically. Yeah. Like the green oh, arrow. That's there you go. Amazing. But yeah, I yeah, wonder to compete. Go on, Jared, shoot me, please. It'll end the suffering of doing <laughs> see, having to do like a, a damn podcast with you. you we're know? gonna see the arrows start coming through. Yeah, I mostly just yeah. about Marsh, Mount Rushmore. And I got the sea back, and it was a beautiful place. Uh, but I, I, one thing I preferred was the Crazy Horse Memorial. Uh, that was even cooler. I I think it's not finished, but uh, you know, I might be wrong, but I think South Dakota is like the least visited state in the night in our country. It's either north or south, or you know, it's like. They rotate. They're the least visited, and they're like the least populated. Like, I live here my whole life. Well, they wanted to make it the Dakotas because no one visited North Dakota, and they're yeah. like, "Oh, come visit us. Come, yeah. just be one." But that it's so cruel. I, you know, I, I grew up in. Uh, this is maybe a little more inside for like the states. I grew up in like what we call New England, the northeast of the states, and you kind of get raised with this kind of not great view of the South. 
And then when I finally traveled to the South, I was like, oh, every, the food's great. The people are nice. And, you know, people are so much more than, like, their state government. Like, I went to <laughs> North Carolina for the first Imagine. time. And, are we? Yeah. Some people are like, oh, you can't go there. It's a red state. I was like, I don't know. I, I have a lot of conversations throughout my days and travels. And I almost never meet someone. Hey, nice to meet you. Tell me your political views. It's more like, where are you? <laughs> so, like, I don't know. I, yeah. I, the South is beautiful. I mean, everywhere in this country is good and bad everywhere. But uh, mm-hmm. I, just, I always love hearing outsiders' perspective of our country because um, I can be kind of down on it sometimes. But I, well, it, I'm it's happy. it's constant. Okay, in all fairness, what we see is carnage, constant carnage. Um, I think the media is done in a way that the United States is frowned upon. Um, a lot of what you guys do, we pick the bad out of it, and the, or even your own news picks the bad out of it. It's awful to see. We talk to so many Americans, and, and they're you know you're beautiful, amazing people, and the whole thing. Yeah, Come on. yeah. <laughs> I was looking at you when I said that. Um, but yeah, to genuine, you, he's lovely, and I, I think he's got a hard rap. Pretty rough. Yeah, I, I like forty nine states. Did you, do you get like postcards from them? I collect postcards. How, wait, how do you get to forty nine? So what's uh, oh been... Hawaii, Hawaii or Alaska? But what, on, what if they're going to go to all the states, you got to go. What to if like, they're like, uh, no, I've been to everywhere except Minnesota. <laughs> That's a state, right? Minnesota is a state. <laughs> um, so for for someone who has never listened to your podcast, they're like, awfully Irish. I don't know what that is. Why don't you explain a little bit about your show and what you guys what you guys are about? We just like talking to people. <laughs> I think it's all, like seriously. We just want to talk to people that are cool, Same. you know. Like we text, we we decide who what. Like we decide the guests. We decide who we talk to, even when we're online. Even when we're streaming, like we decide who comes on to talk to us. Like you know, we just like to talk to people, and you know, we like. Yeah, I like making I, people I laugh. Really, I, I, I can totally relate, it's cool. and it's it's such a new world, and and podcasting is so it's it's unique because like the that like you know the parasite parasocial relationship that you like build with people and it's like so funny like i don't know if you've had this experience yet or you definitely will for sure in the future if you keep up at it it sounds like you guys are really killing it but like i've gotten to like talk to like my my childhood like heroes i'm like why are you talking to me like it's i I always felt like starting a podcast is the best way to trick people into being your friend absolutely people that you think are much cooler than that's how i met i was like i've had the experience (laughs) Yeah, it's it's incredible, and then sometimes those people become like your peers, and then like they're your friends, and it's like, yeah, all right, I can't believe this person's texting. Nervous me. at first, but then the person's like down to earth, and it's like, oh, you are just human, just like yeah. me. This is great. Well, I've learned guys... is, uh, no, no one, no one in their, no one, no one in healthy relationships, no one around them thinks what they do is cool. Like I, every famous person I've ever met, their family is just like, yeah, whatever. And I think that's probably I'm a sign so of a good healthy it. relationship. You like. Yeah, kids always are like, no kid ever thinks their dad is cool. I think I was just listening to an um, an episode of Going Off Track with um, uh, Chris Shiflett from the Foo Fighters, and it, talking about how his daughter thinks uh, his like sixteen year old daughter thinks that uh, rock and roll is stupid and guitar music is dumb, and she only likes hip hop and stuff. And like, and that's and that's true. Like, and the Foo Fighters are like a monstrously po- monstrously popular worldwide band, and the kids are like, yeah. So I, I think that's it's so fun, but I think the trick with the podcast is you're like they're like oh my god finally someone thinks I'm cool, my wife keeps making fun of me well it's mine oh my gosh oh my god um so <laughs> which show were you guys most nervous about like interviewing and you also um, do gaming let's start with the interviews like which one are you most excited about and nervous I'm just gonna go backtrack a little on the you go for the yeah, um, yeah. we we um. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, we talk to cool people, um, but obviously there's a, it's a bit it's a bit selfish in there. I want to talk to people have things that I'm interested in. Like I, we had paleontologist Jack Horner on to talk about how close we are to bringing back dinosaurs, closer okay. than you think. Uh, right? Yeah, he's a very very cool guy. Very easy to talk to. Yeah, I saw Jurassic Park. Did not end well. Yeah, he he um he was a scientific advisor for all of the movies so far. We're gonna uh, get some contacts from you, George. Oh I think, yeah. Didn't they base the, didn't they base Alan Grant off him as well? They did. Like the dude who wrote the Jurassic Park books based him off, like Jack Warner. Yes. We should connect uh, with back. our Jurassic uh, Park podcast friends, Brad. Well, there you go. But yeah, um, what most intimidating guest we've had on, 
Um, I suppose Minnesota. It is I didn't know they were intimidating. Was Bruce Thomas, a voice actor for Russell Adler in Black Ops Cold War? Oh. Uh, so he he is such a deep, you know, manly voice that <laughs> it, it, it kind of scares me because not normally when we do these shows, I, I get on a level with with the guest and you know we're, we're okay. I, I feel like okay, we're just two people talking. Well, three three people talking could be four, and you know. When that's broken, I start to shake. I get scared, and he scared me. Uh, for for the first, I don't know, ten minutes, I was just sitting there like, "This guy's voice." Sounds intimidating. I remember mine. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge Breaking Bad fan, and so oh, yeah. when we start when we started the show, I, I I texted all the cast, and you know when when uh, Charles Baker got back to me, fuck ah, uh, Skinny Pete, like I I I was. That was my favorite episode. It still is. It's like episode twenty something, and it's like my favorite out of all of them yeah. because that that guy is so fucking cool. Oh, so sorry for my language. Like it's, seriously, he's so he's just so cool. Oh. And then they were. Um, did you watch the the Breaking Bad movie? And and then I know I, I'm obsessed yes. with Breaking Bad. Better Call Saul, all of it. But they they I loved them. Um, he had one of my favorite that scene when they gave Jesse the car. It was just like, oh, yeah. God, anyone listening, just start a podcast or a YouTube show and ask people to come on. And you don't know why, but sometimes they say yes, and it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, no, it, it's an experience, guys. Um, doing a podcast is, is, is amazing. Oh, I don't think it's for everyone, though. I, I think there's some people who have negative things to say. And, you know, we, you don't want to really hear it. And you, you're not you're going to think for a long time why people aren't listening as a result. Um you know, and I can get to you. And you might say some more stuff. Um, there's a reason, you know, Alex Jones isn't allowed to do a podcast. Uh, you know? I know. He's uh, he's not good. You know, the, the, the dirty little secret about the podcast industry is he's unfortunately the kind of guy. He was like the first one to figure out how to monetize all this stuff. Oh, I, I would have him on the show still. Absolutely. Yeah. No doubt. Do you know why? Because it'd be the first few to get a million. It'd be the first one to get a million views. Uh, you know, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Like, I'll, like, I'm not going to sit there and entertain the guy. I would, you know, try question him. Obviously, I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, Alex, did, yeah, Hillary Clinton is a lizard. You're right. You know. Yeah. Weird, weird guy. He's a. He's a oh my gosh. Guy. Yeah, that's um, that's kind of why we started Let's Chat Live because there's a lot of podcasts out there, and there's a lot about like games, like gaming, or like nerddom and like movies. But this gives the person the opportunity, or the host, the opportunity to talk about the show, explain it, get to know them on a personal level. Like, I mean, if a guy is a real jerk, I'm probably not going to listen to their show, and even if it is super good, because that's just the kind of human I am. Um, but this way, like instead of listening to all the shows at once, you can listen to one and be like, oh man, Awfully Irish, they're pretty cool. Where can I find them? Let me check them out in all their episodes. Well, glad, glad to be here. <laughs> I, I love it. it. I just love that how many cool people I, that you have. And, you know, I think one of the, the secrets of happiness is intellectual curiosity. So the fact, Tom, and, and it, when you said Breaking Bad and then, um, when you said like the paleontologist, so I was like, yeah, exactly. Like, like I, I don't listen. I haven't listened to it in a lot a, a while. But um, I, I in the early days too. I was such a huge fan of the Joe Rogan experience because like he would have like a celebrity on, and then he would have like um like a like a theoretical physicist and stuff who's, like. Uh, who's this guy? Ro, Ro Jogan. I've never, I've never heard Ro, of this guy. He doesn't have any money, does he? From Spotify. Is that, is that, is that the Fear Factor guy? Yes. yes. No. <laughs> Mostly from Alaska. No, no, no he, radio. He's he a big inspiration. You're right. But yeah, he, yeah, he's a big inspiration to a lot of people. Um, yeah, I feel uh, like people give him a lot of shtick uh, and take things out of context. Because this guy, he's pretty articulate. He knows what he's saying. Yeah. Um, he's, he's probably one of the most understanding people I've, I've ever heard. <laughs> I actually, like, to, I, I think he's too understanding to a, to, that's actually his biggest fault is that he's too understanding. And uh, I think that's what gets him into uh, some issues. Like, Sure. He's like so. I um. I I, I haven't li no. I listen. To, I still listen to it every so often. Sometimes, and my biggest complaint, truthfully, is it's like they're three hours long, and like he yeah. puts out like 
two or three episodes a week. I'm like, I, I, I it don't, especially I don't travel as much as I used to since, uh, since court, since the, the, the coronavirus. So, like, it takes me like two weeks to get through one of his episodes now. Well, yeah, no, that, that's pretty rough. But um, we'd be on a similar page. Like, I, I tune in every now and then. I, I seen he had one yesterday. He did it with uh, who's who's that guy again? From wrestle, wrestling, um, what's he called? I know he like used to play a dead guy. What's he called? Sorry, this is mm. on my mind. You're gonna Google that, aren't you? I don't know. Yeah, about the Undertaker, is it? Undertaker, he's the Undertaker. Oh, yeah, Undertaker. That would be interesting. I've never heard him on an interview. Yeah. No, oh, he's retired. Crazy, right? Right? Well, yeah, you don't I don't think I've ever heard him speak. Actually, to be yeah. honest with you. He, he looks very shy when he was on. But look, he's, he's the reason um, a lot of people start a podcast, what people know pod, what a podcast is. Hey! Uh, there yep. you go, Chad. You're right. <laughs> there you go. Um, you bet me to it. Um, yeah. uh, he was one of my inspirations early on, too. When we, my absolutely. old co-host, when we first started, that was one of like the ones we were like, was like we just wanted to like, smoke a lot of weed and just like talk about like science and stuff. And you know things have changed. But that was a huge inspiration early on. Like sure. he has intellectual curiosity, I, I respect him for that. Yeah, and you know you have to you, in in this world today. You have to. Um, you can't you can't be a closed minded person today. You know, uh, you can't be just happy where you are. You gotta be moving forward. Um, and I admire people doing podcasts because obviously they want to go in that direction. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have experienced it, but um, fr from doing a podcast, have you noticed like how you talk to people or even your your um. What'd you call it? Your, I don't know what. What'd you call it? The social anxiety. Your, your confidence would have increased. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I had found myself several times being like, pretend you're doing an interview right now when I'm like stuck in like a social scenario. I'm like, pretend you're on mic. Like, I don't want to say it's like a character, but I feel like once you do it long enough and you develop that skill, it starts to kind of feel like you. I'm not a character, but I feel like. I amplify the best parts of myself on mic, even if I'm not in the best possible mood. And sometimes you kind of do that in real life because, uh, you know, sometimes it's in, you're not always feeling it. But, yeah, I, 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 it, yeah, it's changed everything. It's made me – I feel like I can talk to people. And, like, in my, in my day job, I work for, uh, in behavioral health. So, like, I'm used to having a lot of unpleasant conversations. So I like the That's podcast. Great. It's like, oh, cool, it's not talking about, like, substance abuse and child molestation and, and, and bad things all day. God. How about you, Bree? Um, I actually i I used to work so for. You're just say something. <laughs> oh my god! Um, no, um, uh, yeah, no. I I used to talk to a lot of people. I used to work at a law office. But then I quit my job to do my own thing, and I, I get to talk to people in a different kind of way. And and what you see and is what you get. And when it comes to Twitter, when I tweet, it's just that's how I talk. <laughs> so Sometimes she claps back. There you yeah. go. Bree is the queen of the clapback as well on Twitter. I respect it. I respect it. But Twitter can be a place where you know some nasty shit happens. Oh, it, I love it. It's yes, amazing. yes, it can. Uh, I had to take a step back from podcasting for a bit because I had a cyber stalker from a girl that I used to know, and she's just all crazy. So all my stuff is different. Um, That's fair. Yeah. I, I stopped using Twitter because I thought it was too politically charged and. People were kind of defining themselves by their political beliefs. Oh God! And when you start doing that, it gets pretty dangerous because anyone who doesn't believe the same as you, you don't view them as someone you you want to help or blah blah blah. Are you using Clubhouse? Clubhouse? A new app? Clubhouse? I see no. it. No, sir. I haven't heard. Of, I haven't heard of Clubhouse. No. Oh, I, I I don't know. If, I, I I assume it's in Ireland. I don't know how apps work in other countries, but it's it's um it's invite only at this point but like it's it's still kind of like an up-and-coming social media it's all like it's they call it like audio drop-in but it reminds me of the early days of twitter when like twitter was like you can hop on and be like oh my god i'm talking to, to tom arnold or something like that i don't know why i said tom arnold i wish i had a better poll for everyone <laughs> yeah was it was it carrie bernans who told us about that thomas uh from oh it was black yeah it was yes yeah, yeah. Thomas told us black panther man we talked to you from everywhere i'm sorry can you just not get any cooler because this is amazing. <laughs> this is well, oh, here, here's, here's the thing, guys. Anyone can do it. You, you, yeah. can, you can call. You can call anyone tomorrow and say, "Let's have an interview." Um, yeah. and most, uh, yes, the, and they always do it to, to try help you. Um, like we, we've had, we've met some amazing people, and ranging from like yeah. what you consider to be big to small, 
um, yeah. you know, they're always the same. And um, one, one of my favorite guests is a guy you've probably never heard of, um, Paul Roseberry. <laughs> uh, he was on the show Yo Mama, like back in the day. And he, I think he, he was supposed to win, but they didn't really let him win. Yo Mama? Yeah. Wait, with Nick Cannon or something? On MTV. Yeah. It, oh, wow. It, I, yeah, I just uh, they tell I your mama that jokes. Show. <laughs> but yeah, no, he, he's. Um, with Bill, what was his name? The and guy from have, that 70s show, right? Wilder Valderrama was the host. Wilbur? Is that his name? Are there, is there more than one? Because there was an MTV show, and the whole concept was two groups of people would do your mom jokes at each other. Is that what the show you're talking about? Yes, pretty much. Do you guys yeah, have examples much. of your mom jokes that you would like no, to no, say? No, yo mom. Why Excuse else? me, yo mama jokes. Um, no, none that I would like to say live. <laughs> okay, no. that's fair enough. Could, could I have too much respect for everyone here. I wouldn't say something like that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, so you guys do uh, gaming too. Do you have a Twitch channel or what do you guys stream? Uh, you know, we would have Twitch if we had any idea how that thing works. It's so complicated. Just don't. And my my and our PCs and anything like that, they're just so bad. Like my engine, I'm I'm in the middle of nowhere. I live in the countryside. It's 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 isolated from the real world. And my Wi-Fi is very very bad. That's why I have a Tom and a Thomas McAuliffe voice box right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, we we use uh we, we stream on YouTube. Just because it's in the same place as our podcast, you know, fans are and yeah, and uh, your audience. Yeah, and, and we, I think we stream. Twitch is a bit mean to content creators. <laughs> where YouTube, okay, YouTube is consistent with being mean, but you know, with Twitch, they can out of nowhere just give you a whack on the back of the head. Instagram, I haven't done as much for the Insta Live. I just, ugh, I didn't Can't like it. it. People pick like the top two that work best for them, and then you just go with it. The other ones you just have yeah. to direct to the top two. So, would you guys say YouTube and Twitter are your go tos? No, definitely YouTube. Twitter, Twitter doesn't really work for us. Like we we got more views from Gmail than we did Twitter mm. in the last month. That that I'm, is actually I'm, that's I'm, an I'm, actual statistical fact. <laughs> in, in in podcasting, I think when it comes to Twitter, is a lot of you know, fakery or just BS. Like you, you, you see on Fridays, you know what I'm talking about. On Fridays, oh, everyone's going to Friday. Twitter, and it's going to be, oh, I love this show. They've never fucking seen the show. There's no way they've seen all 140 of the shows they tagged that day. You know? Mm. Yeah. Um, Except I it's, yeah, sometimes. It's, I guess their idea is that if they keep doing that, people are going to retweet it, and then they'll get. Follow. You know, it's 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 standard marketing. If if it works, it works. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, um, it's disingenuous. Like as Thomas said, yeah, two point something percent of our views came from uh, came from Twitter. Gmail um, fairly Aww. recently. But if you combined Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, um, it was still less than the Gmail. Wow! Uh, someone has listened to all your episodes. Do you know who that is? Almost easy. Yeah, he's a good friend of ours. Yeah, oh, he's a pretty good friend of ours. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> okay, that's just Kyle. Kyle, Kyle, just Kyle. Be hacked Kyle, Kyle's Kyle. He shows up. Kyle, Kyle. Kyle's pretty He's cool consistent. I, I like Kyle. Yeah, yeah. One <laughs> of the, I, Kyle's pretty cool. I think it seems like you're in the same boat as us. One of the beauties of podcasting, uh, is, and, and like YouTube or, whatever, or like these types of shows, is like you don't need like a million viewers to like make money. No, sir. Money. You don't really like. You know, you don't need a million viewers to actually like make it in our industry. Like that's actually part of what like Bree and I. Like for a long time before I met Bree, I was always, I was kind of going too broad and trying to get too many whatever. But like as I started to get more hyper niche into more niche communities, like it's not about the numbers; it's really about having those like relationships with our fans. Like I, like you, I feel like I know I probably could well maybe I don't anymore. But there was a long period where I knew every single person by first name. Then fortunately, that it got to a point where I just don't have the the, the brain space for that because it's growing. That's cool. I just but, have a go. Yeah, yeah, it's fun, and that's that's how Bree and I and uh, and our, our team we ended up starting this thing. We it's relatively new. We called it, it's called Let's Chat Club, which we have started like uh, where we have um you know various like it's like a paid membership, and then we offer a various service and uh, an online community. So like you know it's it's cool. Like there's so many different ways. Like I'm not sure for some people it's a hobby, which I love. For some people it's, they want to make it a serious hide hustle. But Bree and I are like we're 
we're in this for the long haul. Like, I, we're going to make this our job one day. Well, you, you best put the fucking work in. <laughs> you, you know how it is. Excuse my – pardon, my God friend. Um, <laughs> look, I'm Irish. My, I'm, I'm oh, Irish. Shit. My, my F-bombs mean a lot less than what they do in the States. Um, yeah, no, but, you know, like, we, we get you guys keep, like, a nine-to-five. My, myself and Thomas, we do this constantly for hours a day while doing college. And – I wish you know, this existed when I was in college. It just works. It, it just works, man. Um, if I had more time, if I was in school, because I'm I'm older than you. Like when when I was graduate, I graduated college in 2008. Like 76. Oh, this guy. <laughs> I, I was I I was when I graduated college. I remember trying to get uh when we were trying to get a radio station started at my college, like a defunct radio station. And the whole like radio club got in a big fight because I remember I was like, we have to start a podcast. And they're like, no, we need to do terrestrial radio or internet radio. I was like, why would we make a radio show that I went to school in Vermont, like very, the rural part of the States, like our a radius of three miles and podcast this is 2008. So podcast, you know, they weren't really that popular yet. I'm like, but anyone in the world could hear them. And the whole thing, it fell to infighting and there was never a radio station. So <laughs> I am so jealous that you get to have this while you're in college. Well, uh, it's an experience, certainly. Um, obviously, we're studying media studies along with marketing. It's very helpful. But yeah. it, what scares me is how media works and how... It's crazy. How much Influence. isn't leg legally important when it comes to reporting? Like context doesn't matter legally, and you don't have to tell the truth, really. Yeah. Um, and accountability is not there for you know, for a lot of things. So, like, what what can you do? Well, it, it just it like just gets a bit scary. Yeah. Media is really scary. I mean, it could do magical things, but at the same time, it just has the ability to. That's why media like this is so much better. Right? And I mean, that's why you listen to podcasts. So you can, you know, certain kinds of podcasts to kind of release yeah. from the real world. Don't listen to Alex Jones. I'm dead serious on that. Yes, sir. As much as I joke about the guy, I have, I've said so much about him today for no reason. But just, <laughs> he's such a, like, bro. Like, I could not make a fictional character that is as crazy as Alex Jones, you know? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, you know, it's funny too. I'm sure you remember like the days of like Vine and stuff. And there's like, I remember like maybe like, five years ago, it's like these kids today and their cell phones, they don't have any attention span. But then out of the birth of that, like podcasting is like a long form medium. I always thought, see it more like a, a throwback to like old school days of radio. Like the, in the days, like these kids, they don't have any attention span. But like, yeah, but I sit down and listen to like two people talk for like three hours, you know? So I know they. Man, it just I love that feeling you get. Like uh, that you just build this like well, one side relationship with the host and I and the best part nowadays, like you can actually talk to that host. It's awesome. Like if you like us or if you don't like us, we're not gonna respond. But if you do like us, we will respond. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um no it's not. Uh, don't, don't, no don't, trolls. Don't agree with him. <laughs> um what do you feel like? I absolutely you're... agree with you. <laughs> I can take you off screen. Thomas. I'll take oh, Bree's side on this one. Uh, Thank Should you give you life, I'll take it away. Um, so what do you guys <laughs> feel like your main purpose for your podcast is? Like interviewing as many amazing people as you want or having people learn about the guys that you like? We, we got asked this by um, active James C. Burns uh, on his show. And we, I was fucking stumped. Oh, so I did it again. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'm sorry. Rebel um, started it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, no, we were stumped. We didn't know how to respond, and I still don't think I know how to respond. Um, I don't know. It, it just it's like second nature at this point. I love talking to these industry people, and yeah, uh, I want to keep doing it as long as there's people being born. There'll be people to talk to, yeah. um, and as long as Myself and Thomas grow as people. We're going to grow into different areas uh, where we're inter interested in and want to communicate to people in those fields. Like today, we interviewed an amazing voice actress, um, Rachel. Uh, is it Kim Kimsey or Kimsley? Kimsley. It's Kimsey. And Kimsey. yeah, so she she's been in a lot of Call of Duty games, and she played Wonder Woman once in an animated show. And nice. then after that. Ten minutes after we st we start talking to Chris Devault, a uh, you know a very prominent um, permaculturist, 
and we talk. So in one conversation, we're talking about oh, what's like being a voice actor, and then ten minutes later, it's um, okay. So yeah, the way we have industrialized agriculture is pretty bad. Maybe we should take steps to secure um, the land and make sure everything you know works for us. Um, how do we do this more organically while competing with normal farming? Blah blah blah. Yeah. Oh, don't even get us started on vertical agriculture. Like we, we can go off of that for hours. Breeze, vertical uh, agriculture. Yeah, have you ever like vertical uh, vertical farming? Like yes. modern instead of using like an, like an acre of land, you can do that in like a skyscraper. Oh yeah, I can talk about this stuff. I went to environmental college. I can talk about this stuff. And Bree is a bit of a green thumb, according to your Insta stories. I, 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 should, I should put you in contact with um, our friend Brian from uh, the Cork rooftop farm. He, yes. He started a farm on a rooftop in Cork. Oh my gosh, I love uh, that so it's much. Only one in Ireland. Only one in Ireland. Rooftop That's gardens. Incredible. I've had the good uh, fortune of spending times in rooftop gardens at people's and like in Manhattan, and it. God, just that any sort of nature. It, there's something special. Greenery, about it. it's just cool. beautiful. It's just so calming. Yeah. Love, I love it. That. Yeah. I used to work on a farm. How'd that go? Uh, so it was my first job. I was 15. It was my grandfather's farm. So I don't know if I got the full experience because, but he made sure um, it was. I remember being very tired at the end of the day, and he was like probably in his 70s and making fun of me, could not be able to keep up. Plants <laughs> or animals. It, uh, I uh, by the time they had animals before I was born, but by the time I was uh, live, it was just plants. But I just mostly did. I would just pick tomatoes and squash. Where you just you crouch, you go all the way down the row, and it's like what about a mile? Do it again. Do it again. You wake up like four in the morning and yeah. go to the market. It it was fun. I mean, it, it's it, I was fifteen, but like looking back, I'm like I learned that I don't ever want to do physical labor at that. Like I it just at that age, I was like, nope, not doing this. A similar experience when I was 15 working in horticulture in Ireland. Um, borderline, uh, I won't say the word. Um, it is it is awful. Um, the work is is, pain, is painful. Um, it's very much like farming. It's, you know, one line, next line, next line. But you're like, uh, what was it? This thing you had to do constantly. Uh, you're like moving pots. And no one really knew why you were moving pots. We just did it. So you'd hold three pots with these three fingers. So three pots together fingers in and pull you'd have a pinch on you like nothing else if you pinch someone you could probably burst them you know you just the pinch the pinch strength of like a lobster by the end of this you know and um oh my gosh. i don't know some of the stuff you had to do was, was kind of crazy i was pretty scrawny like i still kind of am but uh you know they they made me do some some awful stuff in yeah you know, the, yeah you, you'd want sorry. to stay away it from traumatic uh, it was <laughs> you want to stay away from manual labor if you can absolutely yeah um, I feel fortunate yeah. i was able to have be provided that opportunity and well i am also like i think my grandfather my grandparents like you know they were immigrants from italy and then they were able to do the whole thing and give us a better life my parents better life they gave me a better life and of course i was an ungrateful person about it until oh I got my older. gosh really man i grew up like super sheltered but we were in a military family so i got to grow up in uh okay now in japan and so like i just appreciate absolutely everything like i'm so lucky like i, I got to see the girl up in this beautiful island and i got to travel a bit and and it's just a real blessing <laughs> well I'm, I'm i'm glad you <laughs> you, you did a good one I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for you um yeah, Rachel today also came from a military family, and that's not something we have here. So, what's your experience in that? Military families. <laughs> military families, yeah. Like, oh my god, are you guys like more strict or? Um, yes. Would you guys be like? It's just my. Um, I guess what I would think. You might be more conservative in the household. Blah, blah, blah. Um. So. I feel like it is a lot more strict or it was when I was younger. I left home when I was like 16, 17. Um, but my father is absolutely very strict and a little crazy. And I feel like a lot of our friends in the military, like they went through a similar experience. Like they're your curfews this time. Don't do this, you know, line up and do this. And it's like, what the I'm five dad. Um, so we don't talk to him anymore, but I, I don't know. I like to, I, I like to think that I'm a more open person. I'm not super conservative, but at the same time, like no low cut shirts and <laughs> like, yeah. like make sure the dishes are done. Like I enjoy that sure. stuff. 
Like I Brie singing loves and baking drinks. makes me happy. So I think that's from O C D though. Do you want to hear something know. crazy pretty something cool about Brie? Sure. She no. was able to leave her job and type to type manuscripts because that's how much she loves like weird tedious stuff. I do. I really like tedious things. Yeah, I, I I'm still like, wait, what? You you well, people pay you enough money to leave, to like live off of? You're like, yeah. And so I was like, I need a producer who knows how to run a business. That's how we met Bree Bree. Oh, there you go. Okay. You know, you have to, I guess there there is some tedious work involved with doing a podcast. Um, uh, it's more than you think. A lot of editing. Um, yeah. Ugh. Do you guys have like one person that does most of the media and the editing? And I see that you guys got a new. <laughs> Um. What? Just, did you do the new logo too, or? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I do all the. Editing. Oh wow! Jared does a lot of the editing, and I would handle a lot. What of do you the do, media. Tom? Like you I do control it. all the Twitter. I I control all the Twitter and Instagram. Jared doesn't go near oh. them. They're my territory. So oh, any, anytime you see a tweet from us, it, it's pretty much me. He doesn't handle the Gmail, in all fairness, um, no. which is far superior. No. Uh, With great email <laughs> comes responsibility. <laughs> Oh, very true. Um, but yeah, look, it, it has to be teamwork. Uh, yeah, we got a question from someone. Your thoughts on hackers? You know that's loaded. I, I, mean, I guess Kyle, um, Kyle, please leave us alone. Oh my God. <laughs> Gerard, do you want to answer first? Well, <laughs> we're talking uh, about the 1990s film Hackers, right? <laughs> Kyle, while well, while looking at your your stuff in chat, I really doubt to believe that a a hacker change your name to suck on it one two three or oh to the old God. man next door i didn't even see that the name was suck it one two three yeah um so you know you know actually when you when you get you sent us the email today i thought and you know i thought all right i'm gonna invite our discord i'm gonna tell their discord about it and i knew as soon as i knew that i was like kyle's gonna come it's gonna Kyle, be real weird <laughs> damn it kyle there's always one right kyle misbehaves in all fairness i love Don't mind kyle. Him. If if, well, if you miss if you if you really misbehave, you can give him a slap and you can ban him for five minutes and bring him back. Well, not, though the hackers are, I mean, that that's I don't know. I actually think that's a pretty interesting question because on like one hand, like I think it's bad to like I don't know. There, there's a good there's a big sector of like cyber like hacktivism. Like a lot of the stuff that happened here in the states, a lot of those people were like we call them like the internet heroes, like who stormed uh, who um the or the insurrectionist. Like people, the internet hackers or like internet warriors were able to identify these people and like that and yeah. kind of put some pressure on stuff. Like, um, like you know, anonymous for what for better or worse, like they've done. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. That's I can talk. It's a tough question. I guess I like when they're doing things that benefit me and society oh as gosh. a whole. I don't like when they do bad things that hurt people. Well, when it's in the idea of like social justice, uh, I'm, for I'm, I'm honestly not really a fan. Uh, you, you can argue me on that one, um, but you know, I, ju I just don't like it. I feel like people have better things to do than spend hours trying to figure out who someone is. There's government officials um, yeah. who do that. There's the people who are employed to do these things. And mm, right. I feel like a lot of online, um, I guess, social justice is just people trying to fill their lives with a, a deeper meaning where, where it's lacking somewhere else. Exactly. Right. So like when you have an issue or you say something on social media, people are like, oh, you know, are suddenly experts in these things. And it's like, no, you know, <laughs> you might think you are, but bless your yeah. heart. Um, yeah, I, so, I, don't know, I guess it's just so many different levels because like I don't know, I, when I think of hackers, I think of like anonymous. You, yeah. But yeah. I actually I watched this really good documentary no. about anonymous. No, you didn't. Um, so what are some of your no, dream guests about, like, to have yeah. on? <laughs> I feel what conflicted. Was, what, was the what, was, what was the documentary about? Oh my god! No, uh, uh, it, it, no, it, it's not what you think. I don't actually remember the name of it, but it was like kind of it was going against all, following all these hacker activist people. But then one of them had gotten turned by the FBI like very very early on, so it was kind of making the case that uh, it was I don't know maybe it was a little while back, but it was more about like it was it had more of a direction about like, you know, if it's truly anonymous, what's to say that's not like a government or something like that. So it was, sure. it was, it was about how one of the hack, the hack I don't know, basically like got caught by the FBI and then flipped on everybody. <laughs> it was pretty that's interesting. Cool. I wish I could remember the name of it. 
it, I must have seen it on like Netflix or something a few years back. I like I like documentaries a lot. Not like conspiracy yeah. ones. I tend to watch like a lot of music and um and like drug oh, ones. There's cool conspiracies. I like I'm a big fan of like pop culture conspiracies. Have you ever like the, have you ever heard the um the the West Palt theory that all television takes place inside the autistic boy on St. Elsewhere's mind? I've heard of it. Yeah. It's awesome. Like in that because level, there's, there's references to so many different TV shows. Oh, yeah. and like, cause I, I, I like I don't like Alex Jones conspiracies, but I really like those like TV ones, like the like Breaking Bad takes place in the same universe as Tom and Jerry, and then people like connect you or like how I, I'm a sucker for that stuff. Or like <laughs> the real dark ones. That's what I don't want to believe. Um, sorry, sorry. Bring you out of you the question. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> Over here being because, the voice of I don't know what a script oh, kitty is. is. You know, there's got to be one, right? Um, what um, if you guys could have anyone on your show oh, individually? Yes. Which ones? Love this question. Well, who are your top two guests you wish go you ahead. could hit? Bree, Bree, Bree. I want to have Bree on your show. Hmm. Uh, well, I'll go first. I, I I don't know if I can do two, but I can never do one. I really, really want to have Sasha Baron Cohen. I am such a big fan of that guy. Borat, Ali really? G. Really? Uh, even, yeah, are you kidding? No, I'm not he, judging. This, I'm so happy for he's you. Great. Oh, he's God. like the funniest comedian I've ever watched. He's so and smart. have him on my show, what? it would be such an honor. I love him so much. He went to Cambridge University. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he like did his dissertation about, I'm going to mess it up, but it was about like the the role of the Jewish people in the civil rights movement. Like he is a true intellect. Like he is yeah. such a fascinating person. Wow. And oh my god. Think you... about comedians. You gotta be very smart to be a comedian. Yeah. Be, Did you, you see quick, very quick witted winning. too? Yeah, right? Yeah. Um Did you he got Chick Cheney to sign a waterboard and uh that what is it? Uh so that, that new show he did with Showtime the Who Who's America, America, yeah. That's but when he got OJ to like oh my god, he got OJ with the glove and that killed me. It was well uh, no pun intended. But uh yeah, he is brilliant. I like Brian oh, Regan. He's one of my fun. favorite. Well, I love Brian Regan too. Oh, he's, he's so like funny. Borat. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Look, he's. What about you, Gerard? Who's your uh, yeah, Gerard. One of your, your white whales? Well, it was it was um, Jack Horner, Jack. but then I got him in an instant. I basically he answered me in like within hours, so I was kind of lost. I, it's it's a hard one to answer. Like I would love to talk to Joe Rogan, but what about? He's talked about everything that I could ask him. Why would I oh my God. have a conversation? You would, just say, you would just say, hey, how's your day? And then you'd have three hours would go by and your life would be changed. That would be so funny. I'd be sitting there eating. I'd be sitting there after doing my first DMT DMT trip, eating a fucking elk steak and um, you're smoking a J. You know, yeah. um, again, I'm sorry, Bree. I'm, kill I'm killing you over here. I'm so sorry. Military family? Is it obvious? I'm so sorry. I'm so no, sorry. you guys are great. No. I, I can't like just come back in Ireland. Cursing is just so mundane, like it's just common. Why? It's like, like uh, or um, you know, you replace with bleh or bleh, you know. Um, sorry. It's, uh, <laughs> it's absolutely. Fine. Every, every time I curse, I, I end up like looking at Brie, like, oh no. <laughs> Where are I know, I they know <laughs> they're supposed to be. I'm sorry, but um, it's yeah, another another person maybe. Maybe Conor McGregor. Um, I feel like he's on a redemption arc at the moment um, after, you know, acting the maggots. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm not familiar with. I know he's a UFC fighter. Yes, yes. he's a UFC fighter. Oh, he's so what, 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 why is he uh, tomorrow? You said he's under a redemption story. What was his uh, fall from grace? I love a good redemption story. Well, he attacked another fighter um, like out of the octagon um, for no reason. Just intimidation kind of stuff. It, it was awful. Money got to his head. This this guy was on social welfare in Ireland. And then suddenly he had millions of dollars and he didn't know what to do. Um, he was the most famous guy in the sport. And he just went crazy. He's kind of gotten more respectful. He's, he's going back to his roots. He's um, just behaving himself. I'd I love to see it because um, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of a sap when it comes to, um, you know, redemption arcs. Like I feel like even in the worst people that there, there's good in them and you know if they go about it the right way they can I sort know. themselves out i know? always tell my son that like you know sometimes people do bad things but it doesn't make them bad people it's just a bad decision and you know it's 
as long as what you do with it that matters if you learn from I'm, it. Oh, yeah. that, I, that's one thing that's hard to hide from in social media, though. You know, it gets out you did one bad thing in, in high school, you're kind of screwed. Are you a John Ronson fan? No, sir. Oh, what did you do God. in high school, Gerard? Is there something you, we need to know? You would love it. He wrote the book, um, so, you've been Pug, so You've Been Publicly Shamed. I heard him on Joe Rogan years ago. But he he gets into media like like he's like a kind of like a media cultural critic. Um, you would I just from just talking tonight. I feel like you would just love his work. He had a, he has a great podcast. He's a great author. Um, you know, like I think sometimes when people say one thing about social media, like you just you just, you've heard all the talking points, you're like whatever. But like, talking to you guys tonight, it seems like you're like much more critically thinking and talking about it on the level. Like I listened to him, I was like, oh yeah, like he just. I actually love meeting people who think different than me because I want to expand my mind. Uh, I feel like you would really like him. He, he would be a good guest, too. He's pretty famous. He's like a Rolling Stone, he's, you know, in that Joe Rogan podcast guest world. He's but cool. I, I wouldn't really like to go about trying to steal his guests. Um, you Why not? The stories have kind of been told. Yeah, um, you are You're really dropping the ball, man. What? Yeah, yeah, no. I, I, I see where you're coming from. I'm going to guess that's like a little sense of fear. The best part is you have a guest on and have them find the thing that they want to talk about that they haven't talked about anywhere else. That is like a true gem. I think for me, that's the part I love. Like I got to interview um, Benny Horowitz, who plays in the Gaslight Anthem, which is one of my favorite bands. We didn't talk about music once, and it was basically a therapy session. And he's been on a it. lot of podcasts. And I was like... But you get to have that. It's what makes it's gonna make what makes you you. So I I, I think you should see all of his guests. Mm. Yeah. Tom, you guys just Tom's continue doing what you're doing and like getting to know the guest on like a, a deeper level, so you can mesh a little bit better when you're interviewing, like you have. So Elf Jones is your next guest. Yes, he's on next Saturday. We get a lot of guest recommendations. And we don't always take. We do. them. That's always fun. I, I, I do. Um, like, there's some people like. Up, Kyle. I don't really want to talk to them. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm sure sure he was very interesting. I'll actually take a look at that genuinely. I'm not. I'm not going around and making fun of you. Um, oh, yeah, other, exactly. people, other people have given us recommendations, and I just kind of like. What would they even say? That's yeah. That is the funniest thing, and I'm so guilty of this too. I've had people like recommend guests that I should like on paper. I don't know. There's something about when you have a podcast, it's like if the idea doesn't come from you, it's like, nope. And I know I, it, it, when we first started working together, Brie, I know I had to work through a lot of that. Be like, that is a really good idea. It's like, yeah, I, I totally know what you mean. I almost, I book my guest. I'm like, I can't let anyone else hands on that. I, I don't know why. I'm just like, I don't know how to explain it. I don't even know why sometimes you pick the guest. It's just like, I want to know uh, that person. I don't know why sometimes. Yeah. Uh, sometimes a guest calls us and we just say, it's time, time to do a podcast. Dr. Dave Hill, Paul Roseberry, Mick Wary, uh, James C. Burns, all ones that just, we had no idea why, but we just went for it. And they're probably, they're, they're really close friends of mine now. I, I yeah, love they're, that. they're all good people. They're all awesome people. That, I, mean, Bree, I mean, you had listened to the show before you were on it years ago, I assume. Like we met on Twitter and then like- and I sure would hope so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no, but it's, it's, it? yeah, it's when we were business partners. It's like you know, it, it's funny how that stuff works. Like you're like, yeah, no, I, I totally get it. It's just like, oh yeah, we're like friends now. Like all of a sudden, like I talk to Bree more than I talk to like most people. I think we talk every day. So. Well, if you work together, that's definitely important. I, I feel like if you want to succeed in this, you need to treat like a nine to five every day. Um, I, I mean that too. Um, if you're working, like. You know your day job. You have to find time to, to put into this. If you really want to do well with this, you gotta Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. I can tell you guys want to do it. You guys just really, really need to put everything you have into it. You need to be thinking outside the box. How are we going to advertise this episode? Is this going to get views because of the format? Blah blah blah. You know. Yeah, this is our newer show, believe it or not. Of 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 well, the first of our of our little web. I don't know what we call it. Our little club. Our little club. I don't know what the it right works. word is. It works. Do you guys have a lot of background work? Like, do you um? Like, learn more about your guests, think about certain questions you want to ask them, or do you have like a general list of questions to interview oh, with? Oh, of course, we you do. Yeah, we, we know we know pretty much everything. We probably know our guests better than they know themselves, you know? 
Everything? Like, so speaking of cyber hacking, uh, yeah, it's all yeah, over it's here. Like we stopped doing an interview style show to have a conversational show because, um, you know, I don't know, James, James C. Burns doesn't want to be asked, what was it like playing um, a character Woods in Black Ops 1 and 2? Because he's been asked that a million times. Why would he want to talk about that? But if I'm asking, oh, hey, James, how's things in um, California? Blah, blah, blah. How do you, what do you think about this, that, and the other? Um, what's it like in the industry at the moment? Blah, blah, blah. You know, talk about more relevant things. Um, it just seems to go better. Like, mm -hmm. it, ju it just works. Like, they're people. Like, really? if, I, if you ask them the same questions the whole time, they're not going to spit out something beautiful. It's going to be the same they've said for years, especially yeah. if they're known for something in particular. Yeah, you know, when I first started listening to podcasts and, like, I remember, like, celebrities would, like, would always come out, like, or, like, names would go on to, like, I would listen to Nerdist at the time. It was one of the first ones I listened to a real lot. And it was always, like, the pe the, like, the guests would be, like, this is great. It's not just going into a room and answering, like, the same 25 questions. Like, like I, I like, like, talk show. It's not, like, the talk show format. Like, the guest actually gets to go and talk about what they want to talk about. Like one of my favorite podcast episodes ever was slash from guns and roses was on an episode of Nerdist years ago. And they spent like an hour plus just talking about dinosaurs. They didn't talk about guns and roses. Didn't talk about any of that stuff. And slash is like, this is so wonderful. I never get to talk about my love of dinosaurs. And the whole time I'm just like, wait, what? Yeah. But, yeah. Dinosaurs, man. You'd be amazed what people are, are interested in. Um, well, that's cool. it, it's, a, it's hilarious some of the stuff you'll find sometimes. Um, yeah, it blows my mind. Yeah. Oh. Um, oh. Sorry. No. Spot. <laughs> no, this is, it's awesome. I feel like I want to ask you guys what's uh, one interest that you guys have that's most people don't know about you. Go ahead. You know, it's something because we're in Ireland, and I don't think many people actually like pay attention to it. But I'm a huge NFL fan, and not a lot of Irish people watch NFL at all. And I just love it. I love watching it with my dad. It's awesome. Oh, who's your favorite team? Come on, Packers, get the win! Yeah. Obviously, someone from here is Min from Minnesota. Yeah, is that where Packers are? I live really close to the Patriots Stadium. Like it's less Seriously? than an hour away. I go there. Oh, wow. get, cool. I go there to get Five Guys sometimes and watch them. That's well, awesome. Hey man, if we ever show up, we better get five guys. Do you, do you have five guys in Ireland? No, sir. Nope. Oh, it's a burger joint. It's, it's the best. It's yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm I don't eat beef. beef. <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> All right, Gerard, you. What's um something most people don't know about you? Well, yeah, that's weird because you know with the archery they know about it, but um, I know I'm a, I'm a big film guy. Um, I. As much as I hate, you know, people constantly finding deeper meaning within simple things. I think in film it's an exception, and you know, I, I just I just love seeing it sometimes. Also, very interested in um, you know Celtic history because a lot of it got erased with British occupation. Um, because they, <laughs> okay, I've no I've no problem with them being here anymore, obviously, but like, um, for over like a thousand or a thousand years, nearly they've they've been in Ireland, um. So it kind of suppressed like the Celtic uh, stuff. It's neat. So, no, that, that, that's uh, a. Did, did you say did you say Celtic history or Catholic? Celtic. 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 Yeah, I thought you said Catholic history, and I was like, oh, that's also pretty interesting. <laughs> well, I mean, most people in Ireland are Catholics anyway, so. Yeah. Um, but no, no, the Celtic history is 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 old. It's it's some amazing stories. Yeah, I don't know much about it. I was talking to a guy yesterday. It was, it was Paul Roseberry, funny enough. <laughs> and we talk about aliens because he's a comedian. I was like, oh, do you have any pieces on, on, on aliens? And, um, you know, we start talking about like, oh, do you believe in it? Eh, kind of. Eh, not really. And we talked about like in Irish folklore, there's different stories that could point towards it, you know? Yeah. Like, Thomas, you, you know the one, Ushi in the Tierna Nog. Yeah, yeah. Do you want me to tell it? Uh, yes. Thought, yeah, so basically this... Uh... This guy Ushin, he's going off with his his clan called Fianna, and this this one this lass goes up to him and goes, you know, if you come with me, you'll you'll like you'll never grow old. And they go to this place called Tirnanog, and basically he lives there. He has kids with her, and 
he's like he wants to go back and go see his clan again go because his dad's in the clan and he goes back and it turns out he'd be gone he'd be he had been gone for like thousands of years and he's gone for 300 years it's 300 my bad then what happened like he fell off he was on a horse and he wasn't allowed to touch the ground and he did and then he turned into an old man it was like it's pretty he aged to learn it for like, and then died yeah. Oh upon so, upon instant, actually, pretty graphic. No, <laughs> <laughs> but no, like I guess the story, you know, it kind of points towards the idea that someone from a faraway land called Tirnanog, which means land of the young, um, you know, took one of the, I guess, one of the most powerful men in Ireland off to a different place, um, uh, had kids with him uh, within three days somehow, um, um. And then he came back after three days saying he wanted to visit his friends and so on. And if he got off, I guess, the craft that he was on, um, you know, he'd be put back into the time frame he came from. So he ate 300 years instantaneously and died as a result. Now, I, that one kind of got me yesterday. Um, I'm, I can barely remember why we're talking about this. It's 2 a.m. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it just in terms of Irish folklore, that's the one that points more towards aliens for myself. Uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, I love folklore. It's a cool I was one. in Guam, like, and we had folklore there too, and I just just eat it up. Because mm. you like you wonder like how ancient they are and how much they've been changed. Yeah, mm. right. <laughs> Passed through uh, word of mouth mostly. Um, two a.m. I'm sorry, guys. So yeah, we, we have to yeah let's. <laughs> Jimmy, thank you on. so much for coming up coming on that chat live and is there any plugs you would like to give or how can people find your show well check us out on youtube you where we mainly post there you know like youtube off the irish podcast you know follow us on twitter i mean you're not you're not going to watch our podcast if you follow us on twitter let's be honest here it's on your link tree <laughs> though <laughs> you can find it there you go but yeah, no, check us out if you like us, um, if you think if you think we're a good crack. And we also have a Discord if you want to talk to us after, right. uh, have a chat, blah, blah, blah. Because uh, we're always working from home. We're all ab obviously able to uh, answer things very quickly. Um, but yeah, yeah, off the Irish, everywhere. Cool, thank Find you. So, guys, it was an honor being on the show today. Uh, with you yes. are, are, are very lovely, lovely people. Um, you know, you, he's obviously... Um, you really want to do well with this, and I, I love seeing it. And power to you. Power to you. 100%. Um, oh, thank you. This is so much fun. Yes, One day, Joe fun. Rogan's going to give you a call, and he's going to say, how are you getting on? Do you want to get in the show? And you're going to say, yeah. <laughs> are we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not allowed to make decisions without me. Um, uh, Rebel, where can people find you on Twitter? I'll be on the Joe Rogan podcast next week. <laughs> I imagine how I... you actually do. Like just this whole time we keep it a secret. Like, oh. yeah. yeah um, <laughs> Twitter and Instagram, you can find me at, at Left Chat Rebel. We also have the podcast pages at Let, um, Left Chat Podcast, and we also uh, actually the best place is LeftChatPodcast.net, where you can find all of our social medias, all of our information, uh, all the other fun live stuff. We read, we do panels. We we do a lot, so it's been fun. Uh, Bree, what about you? Um, you can find me at Let's Chat Live. <laughs> I help run that. Um, or Rochelle KB, my middle name. Uh, and Let's Chat Live, Let's Chat Podcast.net. I think I would know it by now. But thank yeah, you, you guys so site. much for being on. <laughs> Tedious work. I love it. What can I say? Um, a big thank you again, you guys. Um, I hope everyone has a great night. I don't know. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm getting tired. It's almost 10 o'clock. And like, oh, you guys. And you're complaining. And they're like, oh, no, no. Look, I'm not going to say till about four or five. Yeah, no, we were going to be up anyway. We got loads of children, do you?